Let me hit record real quick. Cody Cook and I am the Assistant Director of Admission. Um, I graduated from Center in 2014 with a Spanish major and linguistics minor and I'm from Louisville, Kentucky originally, so about 90 minutes away from Center. Um, have been with Center for a while now, I've worked in student life and then joined admission almost a year ago. So um, let's see, Clay, do you wanna introduce yourself next and then Lauren, then JK and me? Shirley Kane, my name is Clay Taylor and I'm also a Center grad, I'm a 2016 grad. Um, I too am from Louisville, Kentucky and um, this is my second year in an admission with the um, college. So I'm very happy to be back at this place and I was an economics and finance major. And I play football. <laughs> My name is Lauren Samuelson. I also work in the admission office at Center. Um, I graduated in 2016 with a history major and an education minor with my degree. Um, I'm originally from Louisiana, but I went to high school in South Florida before I came to Center. Um, after graduating, I'm actually going into my fifth year of working in admission work, um, but I've worked for two much larger universities um, in bigger towns and different kinds of cities and very different locations all over the country. So, um, but came back to Center last year and have a really big heart for Danville and Center. So excited to be here. Awesome. JK? My name is JK Gonzalez. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Um, I'll be a rising junior this year, um, and I kind of just help the college with um, college admission stuff sometimes. They put me in on videos, so i um, just happy to be here. Awesome. Hi. Yes. Hi, my name is Mimi Khan. I'm also a recent graduate of Center, so I graduated in 2020 with an uh, international studies major in French minor. I'm one of those infamous class of 2020. Um, and I'm originally from Myanmar, so I come from um, from like about 8,000 miles away from here with about 30 hour flights. Um, yeah, happy to be here. And Mimi, what are you doing next year? Next I am going year. to Stanford University for my master's degree. Awesome. Yeah, big snaps to her. Full ride plus, so we're very proud of Mimi. Um, Awesome. Well, I want to again welcome everybody to our center seminar today. As um, you all probably know, it's about being a college student in Danville, Kentucky. So um, we realized that I think everybody in here is from a different location out of state. And so you all might have some questions not only about center, but what it means to be a college student in Danville. So today's presentation, we're going to go over um, things to do on campus, things to do in town. We'll talk about our experiences in Danville as center students and center staff and faculty um, and whatnot. So um, again, if you have any questions, you're welcome to pop those into the chat. Um, also, because you all are from different locations, if you all don't mind, you don't have to challenge by choice, but just type in really quickly where you're from so we can kind of get a scope of um, where everybody is tuning in from today. But while you all are doing that, I'm going to screen share, so it probably will shift some things around. I apologize in advance, just so we can kind of see our presentation. Awesome. All right. Clay, would you like to take it over? You're on mute. There you go. <laughs> Got too excited, you all. <laughs> so Danville is located right smack down in the middle of Kentucky, um, hence where we got our name Center. Um, it's in central Kentucky. Um, it has a lot of nicknames for it, but the main one that you may see um, around town is quite simply the nicest town. And um, I, I would say that's very true. Um, Danville's a pretty open environment. Everyone is involved with each other. Everyone's a big community with each other. So. Um, it's not a doubt that people will say hi to you that you do not know when you're walking around town or in Kroger or in Walmart. So um, people want to know who you are and what you're doing. Um, we're also labeled the city of firsts. Um, that's a pretty interesting label because um, Danville is actually where the Constitution of Kentucky was signed. It was signed at Constitution Square. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But um, it's also where Kentucky's first courthouse was. And um, it's just a, it's a city of new beginnings. And I think it's something that really reflects what Center has to do as well. Um, we're also, also most recently named the most charming small city in Kentucky by loveexploring.com. Um, and I think that reflects with the college life that we bring in as well. Um, Danville's been around for quite a while and there's a lot of nice local shops on our main street downtown. 
um, including restaurants, boutiques, um, bakeries, um, churches. So there's a lot of activities that have been submitted to Dable throughout the history of the town. Um, Population-wise, we are around 17,000, so we are, again, on the smaller side, but that adds to the more community aspect that um, not only Danville has, but the center has as well. Um, and being in Kentucky, Kentucky has a lot of states that are neighboring and bordering our, our state. So it is a great central location to beam off of to go to other places as well. So um, just for example, we're about an hour and a half away from Louisville. As Cody said, we are around three-ish hours away from Indianapolis six is hours away from Atlanta, so and like three-ish hours away from um, Nashville as well. So there's a lot of different pinpointing towns that we're a lot closer to, quote-unquote. And um, another interesting fact, we are a sister city to Carrickfergus, North Ireland. Um, that's a pretty interesting thing that we have going on. It's basically sharing cultural ideas and art and um, just different aspects of each other's towns just to get to know each other well and to create a global connection with people around the world. Um, Danville is a place where no one would expect to have a big international scope, but um, as you soon may learn, um, Danville is located everywhere, um, and I think it all starts at being in center, and then we go out. So. <laughs> awesome. And just to give you a better idea, if this is maybe your first time hearing about center or our campus experience, we just wanted to give you an idea of what campus life is like. We're going to talk about what our town is like and what our location feels like, um, but if this is your first time tuning in and hearing about center, we wanted you to get a better idea of what our center experience really does feel like. So um, Mimi and JK will probably jump in here with some student stories, but just some basics to think about. Um, pretty much all of our students live on campus. 98% of students are living on campus. Um, and so that does mean that our students live on campus all four years. And so it is a truly residential experience. Um, it's very easy to get involved. It's hard to feel like you're missing out <laughs> when being on campus all the time. Um, there's lots of clubs and organizations, over 100, um, a lot of different things to be involved with. Um, Mimi and JK can talk about the different clubs and organizations they've been a part of, but there's just really something for everyone on campus. Um, in addition to that, I think there's over even 2,000 campus events throughout the year. Um, so there's always something going on. I know as a student, I always felt like I think when I got to college, I was so worried I was going to get bored, and that's the opposite of what I felt like at Center. I felt like there's always something to go to, something to get involved with, um, and we listed a few. Um, one is our Campus Expo. That's where you find out about all the different clubs and organizations during the first week of school. Um, we have our Campus Center After Dark events that happen in our Campus Center on Friday nights that are super fun with all the different themes and activities. We also have a carnival every spring with a big music headliner and actual carnival like attractions on the lawn, which can seem pretty ridiculous, but it's very fun. Um, we have the Flame Festival, which has musical events and different activities on campus as well. And athletics, about 40% of our students are student athletes on campus. So um, it always felt like I, there was some athletic event to go to throughout the week. I felt like there was like one a day sometimes. So that was really fun. Um, study abroad and study away is a big part of our campus experience. About 85% of our students do study abroad, um, and so you really do get that international experience. And it's also brought back from a lot of your friends, too. Um, and another part of center term is the part of our year during January, our students only take one class. Um, and it's really fun because those are very unique courses, and everyone's taking something very different. Um, and it's fun to see what everyone on campus is taking. So that's that's a really fast kind of run through of campus life. Um, but we just wanted to make sure that you knew how, you know, thriving campus is and there's just a lot to do on campus. And um, we're gonna talk a lot about Danville today and the Danville experience, but we also wanted you to know that our students do spend the majority of their time on campus too. Um, and so that's, the center experience is really a big part of everything as well. So Mimi and JK, did I miss anything? Um, I wanted to add something about the Northern Center for the Arts. So the Northern Center always have like performances and plays throughout the year. Uh, and they usually have about four or five performances each month. And that those have been like some of my favorite things at Center. So I've never, I have actually never missed a play at Center except when I was abroad or away um, because they're just really wonderful, like entertainment that you can go to. Uh, Northern Center have like really uh, renowned artists like come and perform like Shanghai Symphony Orchestra, Sticks, like those are all really like really nice like chairman session where you just like don't care about anything and just go and like enjoy the music and uh performances so that's also another thing 
That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff that happens on campus is also student run. So not only do you get a chance to enjoy it as a student that's kind of getting there and, and seeing all the beautiful things that, that go on on campus, but if you're interested in like starting clubs and, and running like, for example, like a festival or, or, or a movie or whatever it may be, um, you can also get behind the scenes at, at Mimi brought up the Norton Center, you're able to kind of go behind the scenes and work at a scene shop and all that. So it's pretty neat to have all those opportunities on campus. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. Let me unmute. So one of my favorite topics, food. Um, so of course on campus, we have three dining facilities. We have our main dining facility, which is what we call Cowan. It's a buffet style. Um, you know, come and grab a bunch of different types of foods. They have a bunch of different lines. So you have the um, pizza line, you have the grill that normally has some sort of burger and some sort of vegetarian option, or you can request a vegetarian option. Um, and then our main line, is in addition to my favorite dessert lines and um, just a plethora of food, we have um, something called Sandella's, which is kind of a flatbread cafe, but also serves a lot of coffee items and has some grab and go options. And then our third campus option, which is again, physically on campus is a place called The Grill. Um, you can kind of interpret what, it, what they have available based off of the name, The Grill. A lot of it is burgers and some more fried foods, but they also have salads and some more grab and goes. But as far as just Danville dining and Danville eating, um, this is something actually that a lot of students' lives revolve around, especially on the weekends. I know a lot of students will kind of treat themselves with something downtown or something local um, after they've had a hard week of classes or something. So just within walking distance in downtown Danville, there are 20 restaurants and bakeries. Um, this ranges from a brand new Shake It Up place that serves like protein meal replacement shakes to um, the Pizza Pub, which has amazing pizza. They've been open now for about 10 years and almost everything in between. We have a Mediterranean Egyptian restaurant. Um, we have a Mexican restaurant down the road, a deli that serves amazing sandwiches. So um, again, just within walking distance, there's a lot of different options and opportunities. Um, we have a mixture of local and chain restaurants. So most of the restaurants within walking distance are more local, but just within a short drive, less than five or 10 minutes, you're going to encounter a lot of the different big change like um, Cheddar's and McDonald's and um, Wendy's and some of the typical ones that you'll find in, in the other towns. Um, but we also have a Japanese restaurant, two Japanese restaurants. Um, so a lot of different cultural foods that are available within Danville as well. A lot of people, especially when I tell, talk about the Egyptian restaurant, Tuts, um, people are like, I can't believe, you know, smaller towns have places like this. And again, um, what Clay was talking about, kind of that cultural exchange and making sure that we have opportunities that represent the globe. Um, dining is one of the biggest ones there. So JK or Mimi, what are your all's favorite restaurants, whether it be a chain or a local restaurant? But If I really want to treat myself, um, I've had Cracker Barrel once. And, <laughs> and honestly, like, that's the place to be. Cracker Bell is like one of my favorite places. I'm a big breakfast foods guy. So I'll, I'll hop over there. I'm very like Southern-esque food. So um, that's one of my like, like go-to places if I really like feel like I deserve it. Oh, I have a hard time choosing. I think I love Cracker Barrel too. It's like such like great uh, breakfast place. It's just so like, like hot woman in general. Yeah. But I think I love hobbies. Like hobby has, um, it's like within walking distance, and it's really nice to just walk there and I like, catch up with a friend or just go there with uh, friends in general. Their wings are really good. Their pasta is really good, and just generally almost everything they have on the menu, I just like them. So yeah, I think I'll go with hobby. Yeah, yeah. So lots of different options, and again, a lot of students will utilize this. Um, it's kind of a treat place, um, you know, or go out with friends and stuff. And a lot of the restaurants do actually give center discounts um, if you tell them that you're a center student or you're affiliated with the college in some way, shape, or form. So a lot of different opportunities when it comes to dining. This is my favorite thing to talk about, about things to do in Daneville. Um, well, in Kentucky in general, um, Kentucky has a lot of interesting nature and um, refuge type places to explore around. Um, I know there's a lot listed on here, but I can pinpoint 
I can pinpoint all of them. So um, Constitution Square, as it said, is where the Constitution was signed first here in Kentucky. Um, that's about like a 10 minute walk from campus and it has like the original buildings and um, Danville's first post office. And um, it's really just cool to quote unquote, go back in time and see how everything was set up and like get to put yourself in their shoes to see, all right, like this is a, this is, it's, they're all wood buildings that they're all, and they have moss on the roofs. They look really cool. So um, it's cool to connect back to the historical aspect of what Danville consists of. Um, further out west, we have the Central Kentucky Wildlife Refuge. Um, that is a huge acreage amount of place. I'm not sure exactly how many acre, acres are on there, but um, I would guess at least over a thousand. I mean, it spans over, um, it goes along Rolling Fork Creek, and um, there's a lot of, there's like, butterfly um, habitats, there's a whole bunch of birdhouses everywhere, and um, nice, some challenging trails to go on as well, and um, it really gets up onto some um, cliffs and um, some edges as well, and ridges, so, and you can really get down to the creek, there's a lot of um, geodes in there, so there's a lot of crystals and awesome um, fossils that you can find there, so it's really good to escape and just um, be one with nature, really. Um, then further out west a little bit, there is Pearville Battlefield. Um, that was a pivotal point in the Civil War, um, which occurred in October 4th of 1840s, whenever the Civil War was going on. And it was actually where the North pushed out the South of Kentucky. So, um, and there's trails that go along where the South were housed. There's trails that go along where the North was housed and where they both collided. So um, it's interesting to visualize what happened um, Thank you, JK. <laughs> it's interesting to see what, ha what um, to visualize what was happening during the Civil War, um, especially in a place I was so close to college that um, I went to, and especially knowing that Center, the main, one of our main buildings, Old Center, was used as a hospital for both the Confederate and Union Army. So kind of relating the distance between there is pretty cool. Um, then a little bit up north, we got Shaker Village. Um, that's an original Shaker town that um, eventually was wiped out, but it has, I think, Shaker Village has over a thousand acres of hiking and trails that you can go along with. And um, it goes along the Kentucky River, and they keep it up to date. It is like a donation, um, not for profit. So they have a farm that they tend to. They um, have a hotel which you can stay in and um, stay in the original buildings. So again, going back in time and um, living like a shaker is really what that's all about. Um, then the Tom Dorman State Nature Reserve and the Kentucky River Palisades are again against the Kentucky River. Um, there's more nature trails to walk along to escape when. Um, Red River Gorge is about two-ish hours away. It's kind of the eastern side of Lexington. Um, it's housed to the natural bridge. Um, it's an actual bridge that was created through the wind and water pushing through Kentucky over time. And um, I think that goes around 100 feet across. So it's a very long bridge and you can get a good scope of the landscape of Kentucky. Um, Pinnacles of Berea are about an hour away. Um, again, nice cliffs and pinnacles they can see throughout Kentucky, get nice um, landscape and see the hills and dips and um, heights and whatnot they can take advantage of. Um, and then there's a lot of parks around Danville. Um, Millennium is about like a five minute, 10 minute ish walk away. Um, it has a nice trail that goes along, a big pond in the middle where you can see people fishing. And then Jackson Park has a disc golf course in which um, I believe it has all 18 holes. And um, it has a lot of nice hills and whatnot you can take advantage of. Um, Clark's Run Trail is another interesting. Um, trail that a lot of students walk on or run on to escape to get like further away from campus and then you got the 2168 loop which goes along a um, route close to campus it's about like a 10 minute drive away but um, the loop in and of itself is 3.8 miles so um, it's helpful to know what you're getting yourself into and then um, Wizager Park is um, in front of our courthouse and um, they have a big plaza which um, has a lot of historical marks on it and then um, they host what's called um, oh my gosh I can't think of it right now Thursday Night Live I believe in which they bring bands and um, food trucks and um, just a big place where the community can come together and hang out for a little bit 
And then for the golfers out there, there are three close golf courses out there in Brightleaf, Old Bridge, and the Naval Country Club. Um, Brightleaf is around 20 minutes away. Old Bridge is like 15, and Naval Country Club is around 10. So they're all decently close, and um, they love center students to take advantage of those locations as well. So there's a, basically that list, there's a, lot, there's a lot of exploring that you can do while you're a student here. Maybe JK, anything to add? I know JK bikes around quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, being here this summer, uh, I've, I've really got the opportunity to discover Danville at, at like a completely new level. So, I mean, when Clay talks about the parks, I, I've been to Millennium, Jackson, Clark's Run. I haven't done the loop, which is something I'm really, really excited to do. Um, and Wizager Park, obviously. Um, I'm really, really excited to go and start like camping and being real nature boyish and, and go to like Red River Gorge. I really want to try this Kentucky Wildlife Refuge. Um, I went to the Perryville Battlefield once and there's this really, really beautiful tree um, where I, I mean, I took amazing pictures there. So I don't know, I've, I've got an opportunity to check a few of these off the list, but like seeing all of these things, knowing that I could hit them soon is pretty exciting. Yeah, um, I, I've been to uh, a lot of these listed on here as well. And like usually Kentucky, like the, the back roads are like really beautiful and like uh, the trees are really beautiful, and especially when you can plant by sunset, like it's really nice. And especially like June in the summer, uh, even on campus, like if you co go across that still along, like at like around 9 p.m., like when it's starting to get dark, you see like fireflies on like the lawn, and it's just beautiful. Um, and I think there are also a couple other things that you can go. I know students go to like Memo Cave and like in Nashville, uh, Cumberland Falls is like state park. It's also really beautiful. You can do like boating and camping all over there. Um, and um, driving up is also really easy just visiting like Louisville and like uh, they're, they're just kind of a lot of like nature places around there as well. Just kind of wherever you go. So I would just like drive around. It's really pretty. Um, yeah, I would like Red River Gorges especially. It's really, really beautiful. Of course, you would say when I'm there. <laughs> and oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, 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 um, really good point. Um, it's really, really green here. I, I come from a place that's like super dry and like doesn't allow for all this green to happen. So, so simply just like being able to drive around with your friends and see all the like green and see all like the rolling hills of Kentucky, like it's really just honestly too too beautiful to, to kind of capture in a Zoom call, so. And then just a really quick plug, um, Center actually has a bike share program and hosted by the Bike Club. So if you're a student that wishes to bike, and a lot of these trails are accessible via bike, and there is some biking trails, and even a biking, um, I forget what it's called, at Millennium Park, like an actual place set up for skateboards and bikes and stuff. Um, but you just come to campus and you let the president of the bike club know that you're interested in having a bike for the semester, and you can rent it out, um, and you don't have to pay a lot. You know, you just have to kind of take care and maintain the bike while it's in your possession. But super easy and accessible. Yeah, and also there's a car share as well, a generally uh, normal semester. And so it's, it's really cheap, it's like five dollars. So I don't have a car, I'm an international student, so I don't have a car. So I just use the car share to drive around. And it's like, the fan drive, like even driving down to Berea College for 45 minutes, it's just really beautiful road, like greens and like really pretty. So you can always do that too. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, so another, benefit of being in Danville is just getting to know the area and um, being a smaller town something I loved as a student was really getting to engage with the local community and make a lot of connections um, and a big way that our students do that is through service so um, if you're interested in service or involved with community service in high school I think it's really awesome if you get to continue that into college that was a big part of my college choice and something I really wanted to get to do while I was a college student um, as a student I was a part of the Bonner Scholars program which is one of our service clubs on campus, but the, there's so many other clubs to get involved with the service, and I feel like service is combined into almost every club that we have on campus, even majors, a lot of different organizations. So um, if you're interested in being involved with service in college, you'll probably really like the feel of center and getting involved with getting to do that in Danville too. Um, so our students do log over 25,000 hours of community service a year. 
I think it's over like 85% of students that are involved in service in some way. Um, some of our classes have um, service that's attached to the program. I know we do like community-based learning programs. Um, there might be some shadowing that you get to do with local organizations in our area. Um, so our students are really plugged into the Danville community. There's over 25 partner nonprofit organizations. I think something I thought when I moved to Danville, I came from a March, much larger town <laughs> before I came to Danville. And I thought, oh, like there are probably only like a couple places to do service. Um, but really with 25 or over, there's so many different places for you to get plugged in. If you have a specific focus area or a major area that you'd like to target with your service there's so many different places to do that um, I know as a student I local or I did service with um, our humane society um, with different educational organizations um, we have different cafes that you can do service with you can package meals um, I always like that I got to have hands in so many different projects too um, and we even have focus days for you to get involved with service and um, we have a service plunge that right now is tied with our first year orientation that happens on a Saturday. Um, but I know they even plan little service plunges throughout the year on different days. We have our MLK day of service, the United Way day of service. There's the Suits on Us, which happens on Saturdays at different locations all around Danville. Um, and then also our new Center Works program. Um, it's going to be located downtown in downtown Danville above the hub, which is our local coffee shop and where the Center Bookstore is. Um, and that's tied with our new entrepreneurship program, which is going to be a way for our students to get even more plugged into the Danville community, um, not only through community service, but through different um, economics and finance opportunities and business opportunities and just networking. Um, and so I'm really excited to see how that's going to pan out for our students who are really interested in getting even more involved with the local community. But yeah, I don't know. Mimi and JK, have you all had service opportunities that you've enjoyed in the area, things that you've liked? JK, you shook your head. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was just waiting on Mimi. I felt like I was <laughs> encouraged every, every single time. Um, so yeah, like center and service do go hand in hand. Um, unfortunately, I kind of have my time on campus um, because of work or whatever it may be, but that doesn't mean that like service doesn't kind of happen. So for us with the soccer team, as a soccer team, we also do um, some service hours and we'll go, I, I've repped like um, like AYSO games, which is super, super fun to just watch like all these like little kids just score 20 goals and like score in the wrong goal. And it's super cool to go out there and we do it at Millennium Park and um, I'm just like a referee and I go there and the parents give me a Capri Sun and they're like, thank you for coming. It's super cool. Um, and then we have best buddies come on campus and we get to play like basketball and, and, and like just shoot around with, with the people from best buddy buddies. So um, it, even if you aren't like necessarily looking super hard for, for service, service will find you if you're on campus, especially if you're involved. And uh, for the most part, whether or not you're, you're in like a service like group or whatever, you'll find yourself doing some type of community service. Danville really, really appreciates center students because of that. Um, so service, uh, you kind of get the opportunity to do service plans starting your like orientation. So my year, like starting my orientation, there was a community service part of it where students go to different places to do service plans. Um, and also are there a lot of organizations that do service plans that you can support, like uh, the great organizations do a lot of service plans, like, well, my, uh, my year we did the RAs went to the service plunge as well. So the RAs, uh, there's like different organizations and different people that will be arranging at any time. Uh, one of the, um, one of the main uh, community service uh, uh, kind of event that I really uh, enjoy being a part of why a center was poverty and homelessness weekend. And one week, uh, I think it was my probably my junior or sophomore year, I think there was one event where they talk about, it, it, was, it wasn't just uh, on campus, it was about uh, the civil war in Myanmar and the, the, the survey was kind of centered around it. So it's not even just like the community that's, that is surrounding center in Danville, it can also be community where our students have come from and that was really kind of touching uh, service opportunity that you can, you can get involved in. That's very cool. One thing I forgot too was um, we also even have an after school program that's right on campus. Um, and that was something I really enjoyed because I didn't have a car and I came from out of state and um, there was a way for me to serve right on campus. And so they really, like Mimi said, you, the service comes to you. JK said that too. You kind of get involved with service just being on campus, um, which kind of ties into one of our mottos and um, preparing our 
students for lifelong service. And that's definitely something that starts during your college years, which is really cool. Awesome. All right. So entertainment um, is another big part of the center community and the Danville community. So there are a lot of different opportunities to be entertained and to be engaged in that way in the community. Um, Mimi mentioned earlier the Norton Center for the Arts, which is on campus, center run, owned and operated. And um, I mean, at least some of the big names that I've seen during my time here, the Blue Man Group, Yo-Yo Ma, the Vienna Philharmonic, um, Rent, I mean, so many different things come through our Norton Center for the Arts that you would never Walker expect. Flaca. Waka Flaka has come <laughs> to the Norton Center for the Arts. So um, there's never a dull moment, but there is a lot of opportunities to engage in art um, and music and drama and whatnot throughout the years just here on campus. Um, there's also a really cool community theater. Actually, we have two community theaters, but one of the ones that we're most attached to is the Pioneer Playhouse, which has an outdoor venue, and they do a lot of more local plays, a lot of Kentucky history plays and whatnot, and uh, this is a, a real theater where a lot of actors will come through from all over the world and do a stint of time at the, the Pioneer Playhouse. And they put on normally five or six plays a year. And so a lot of our students will get engaged. A lot of classes will go and watch a play. Um, I know I help run the Center Compass program and every year we like to take students to the Pioneer Playhouse. And there are also discounts and whatnot available. And ways that if you are uh, particularly interested in the dramatic arts, um, there are ways that students can get engaged and do internships and um, and whatnot there. We also have a really cool, one of my favorite things to do in Danville is the Art Center of the Bluegrass. Um, the Art Center of the Bluegrass is less than a block away from campus and it has so many different art forms and ways of engagement. So um, one thing that I've done at the Art Center of the Bluegrass is I've, taking, I've taken a pottery class. Um, they have different art classes and music classes. They have different lunch opportunities where you can bring your lunch down to the art center. And I learned a little bit about African drumming um, as like a workshop there. Um, they have different events that center students can work. And we actually have a really close connection. Um, the executive director is married to one of our faculty members and then several alums work for the art center of the bluegrass as well. So any sort of media really, um, whether it be sculpture, painting, drawing, music, dance, the Art Center of the Bluegrass covers and has a really cool thing. Um, if you're looking to break your tailbone um, or something along those lines, Windjammer Event Center is a fun place for center to go. I say that because I've broken my tailbone skating before, um, but this is a skate center in town. They have an arcade. Um, a lot of the groups and organizations will rent that out for like a weekend night or something. Um, the Center College After Dark or the Campus Center After Dark that Lauren referred to earlier has had an event at um, Windjammers before. And so that's just a fun little getaway. Uh, again, a place that's kind of surprising. It's a little bit off the beaten path. So a lot of students don't really know until an organization goes there and it's fun. And then for those that are interested in bourbon in some way, shape or form, um, eventually if you're over the age of 21 or if you're studying in a class, we have several bourbon, chemistry of bourbon classes on campus. You may find yourself at Wilderness Trail Distillery um, which is about a mile or so down the road. It's a fairly new distillery, but they do make bourbon there. And um, so a lot of our students, again, in their studies, will go and study the chemistry and makeup of bourbon. And also, um, we've had some people do internships with marketing and media because Kentucky is kind of a bourbon state. And then something that's, um, we do have a local movie theater like most places do, so that's not unique, but we rent out about once or twice a month the movie theater and uh, allow students to go watch films, the most recent feature films. So you go, you show your center ID at about midnight. That's why it's called Midnight Movie. And um, then students can get in for free. So a lot of students will go and see, you know, the new film that weekend based off of that. They'll go with their friends. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. So yeah, a lot of different ways of entertainment. This is by no stretch a comprehensive list, um, but just some of the big highlights. Mimi, JK, anything to add or anything you want to highlight? Um, I think there are a lot of concerts that are hap that happens like out of the Northern Center for the Arts as well, for example, Center Jazz and Center, uh, different music classes perform uh, throughout throughout the time in my like, warehouse or all kind of gigs and things like that. There are also other events like intercultural ball that, that you can just go to for um, it, 
probably about a week. So some, some other events that are like just happening uh, throughout the weekend. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a lot. Yeah, a couple of things that um, came to mind while Cody was kind of explaining some of these places. So I have friends that are, or have worked at the Pioneer Playhouse and um, apparently uh, John Travolta was there at the very beginning of his career, which is a super cool little, he, he told me a little anecdote about it. Um, and that's like not super rare, apparently. Um, we also at the, at the Norton Center had um, Waka Flocka and Jack Harlow at the same night, which is super, super cool. Shout out to Lil Bull. That was up. <laughs> And um, my roommate is actually working with the Wilderness Trail right now, doing some research for them. And, and kind of because they're such a new um, bourbon distillery, they're kind of working out some of the numbers that they would like to see in the future, in the near future. So it's like, like I said, if, if opportunities don't come to you, you kind of seek them and they're really nearby. So it's, it's awesome. I've also not missed a midnight movie since my first year here. So I go every single time I can to the midnight movies. I've watched so many movies for free and got so much popcorn. It's actually kind of embarrassing, but what can I say? And there's, uh, uh, me and my friends also use the Vulcan Theater, which is downstairs in the Academy building for like, just like playing our own movies in there with just our friends. So that's, that's also really cool. And we actually shot a movie too. So <laughs> something you can do if you want. <laughs> I was there for the premiere of that movie. Yeah, it's a Scooby-Doo movie, so yeah. we wrote the whole thing about Scooby-Doo and Ghost on Center Contest, and it was the whole thing, yeah. Actually, my favorite thing I've done at Center College, that was a Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> awesome. All right, Clay. All right, so extended living. Um, there's a lot of places outside of um, your classic center I guess, bubble that um, you can break out to that escape campus for a little bit and actually dive into the community. Um, the main one or one of the biggest ones is the Bull County Library. Um, it's very fancy inside. They have a great glass blown piece in the rotunda. And um, they have a lot of opportunities for students to um, study and just break away and get the newest books that are out. And um, Again, just another classic escape. Um, Plank on Main is a nice little boutique fitness place. It also has a um, restaurant connected to it. And um, it's a, they have classes in the morning and late at night, or in the afternoon, rather. It's around 5, I believe. And um, they have yoga, hot yogas, and um, they serve different kind of like yogurt bowls and um salads so it's a nice healthier place but um again it's like right down main street it's like a 10 minute walk from campus just like a block or two away and then um some cool study spots that students escape to are the hub which is our local coffee shop and um, they have a nice dining area where a lot of students can I've, I've seen students um I've driven around town quite a bit. I've seen one student there before I left and like two hours later that student's still there. So um, it's a nice place to sit and look at the town as you're going around, but also dive into your work. Um, we also have a Starbucks that's close to our um, Walmart and Kroger. And um, again, I know a lot of people are Starbucks lovers, so we get to say that we have that. And we have two functional Starbucks on campus, but if you actually wanna to go to the store, it's there. Um, Another one, Plank on Main, again, you can study there as well, um, maybe have some food while you're there. And of course, the local parks, um, they have a nice benching areas and ta picnic tables you can sit at where a lot of students go escape and um, just be, again, with nature and get away from the regular hustle and bustle of campus life. Um, Center is also, or Danville in, in and of itself, is also very faith-driven. Um, there's around 30 places of worship with, um, that Center partners with. Um, there's a Presbyterian church right across the street from campus, and then there's a Catholic church not too far away, Baptist church. Um, so there's a lot of different areas where students can go study or just, um, again, be connected with the community in different sort of ways as far as worship. Um, there's also, of course, with the center works and um, how center works in general, um, there's a lot of local internship and job opportunities. Um, with the center, we have a building on campus called the Center for Career and Professional Services, and they partner with a lot of local businesses and um, partnerships so you can gain those internship opportunities. Um, 
I think more mentioned in that too long ago with women is trail. There's a lot of wealth management places where you can go to law firms. So there's really a different aspect um, everywhere. There's a hospital that's walking distance away from the streets. So a lot of like pre-med students get to partner with them, shadowing doctors and nurses as they're going through their time here. Um, as far as job opportunities, again, that's very open as well. Um, I know a popular one is working at the pizza pub as a um, server or as a waiter. And then, um, or just really any local restaurants. Um, a lot of students can find themselves working there after their classes if they have the time to, just to earn a little bit of extra money. Um, every Saturday, there's a farmer's market at Constitution Square. It starts at 9, and I believe it ends at 11. Or one, okay, it's at one, okay. <laughs> so I'm usually asleep at throughout that time frame on the weekend, so I kind of miss that. But um, I know a lot of Dave people um, take advantage of that. They have local fruit and vegetables from around the area. I know that there's some um, beekeepers as well that sell their local honey. So um, if you want to get adapted and really dive into um, attacking your allergies, first and foremost, there's some local honey they can get. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Also, as I said, downtown Danville is very active um, on any given night, um, whether it's just you and your friends or the festivals that they host. Um, there's music festivals, there's different town halls, there's different um, just activities in general just to learn more about what's going on in the world or in Danville in general. And um, again, building that community um, connection they can that really thrives here in Danville. Yeah, I'm really really big on the farmer's market um i don't know if you guys saw the honey that i have i go there every week and that's kind of my source of groceries for the week i've been living here on campus this summer so being able to connect with the people here at the farmer's market has been really really awesome um i also know a lot of friends that have worked at the pizza pub and everything mm -hmm. and you really kind of get sucked into this like like danville culture and you make friends that live in Danville all of a sudden and, and you turn into a center student plus. So it, it's really neat to be able to have that experience on campus. Um, it's, it's not like the people of Danville are super hostile towards center students. It's, it's very much very inclusive. Um, so it, everything Clay said is spot on. Like definitely like I, the farmer's market is definitely the highlight of my week. So yeah. yeah. What do you say to wake up in time to attend? I'll go with you, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. I know JK got that one time JK got like a bunch of strawberries from Farmer's Market and made ice cream. It was it was it was it was super good. Good strawberries were they were delicious. Um, yeah, and I also have a lot of friends who work with hobbies and uh, pizza pub, uh, etc. And when you walk at the restaurant, I think they get like fifty percent discount. So like sometimes like friends will order food from their uh, server discount. So that's also like one of the fun thing. And I think one of my favorites is also like barbecue festival that happens. That's, that's really good too, yeah. Awesome, so just a little bit more about our location. Um, if you're not super familiar with Kentucky or our area of the country, um, I like this visual because it just gives you a really good idea of where we're located. Um, I had never been to Kentucky before my visit to center. <laughs> I really thought that I would be here for four years and then never come back. <laughs> um, and that's not what happened. Um, and I've absolutely come to love this area of the country and also just the state. Kentucky is a very unique state. It really just feel like kind of just the middle of everything and you have beautiful seasons and just a really nice, they were talking about the green space earlier. It really is just a beautiful part of the US. And if you haven't been here before, hopefully one day we'll get to have you for a visit. Um, but just kind of an idea of where we're coming from. I came from very far away. So it was important for me to have an airport close by. Um, there are airports in Lexington and Louisville and we do shuttle services that help with that as well. Um, but it's also just fun to have little road trips so you can go on with your friends. Um, our students don't leave campus a lot. I don't want to give you the impression that people are leaving on the weekends because really we didn't leave a lot. I know people do like little day trips, but really most of our students are on campus quite a bit. Um, but it is nice to have places within driving distance. And I think that's really fun also during our January center term. And um, there are a lot of shorter trips around the country during that time. I know we did trips to Nashville and Cincinnati and St. Louis, and it's just nice to be kind of in the middle of so many places. So just wanted to give you an idea a little bit more about where we're at and um, so you can get an idea of how far it would be to get other spots, so. Um, and, oh, I've, I've gone out a lot and sometimes I have to get out because of like the visa or like the other things that are, that, that involve with. So I've like driven to Chicago, Atlanta for day trips and things like that. And like, it's really not that 
not that bad because you like drive six hours you do whatever you need to do or like sometimes stay one day or two and then come back and i did chicago trips are like my probably my favorite things to do because you just go up there my best friend is, is in chicago so i just go up there and see come back um it's really nice. and also there's a bus to lexington that most students don't know about and it's only ten dollar round trip and so you can get to lexington and then help, like ask your friend to pick you up or something like that or like just go wherever you want to in lexington and it's only ten dollar round trip it's really cheap so. Yeah, I, I, the, the few traveling I've done, I've done um, either with a friend or with like my teammates or whatever it may be. So I've definitely got an opportunity to see a whole different side of the, the country that I had never even thought about. So like coming from super, super far away, like Lauren said, like knowing that there is an airport really close by is, is super helpful. But at the same time, knowing that like you don't necessarily need an airport to get to a whole bunch of cities that are just really well known and beautiful um, that are like like you guys see a driving distance away so um definitely going to take advantage of that this next year as soon as i can so Vicky and i were on a road trip for spring break down yes. to Alabama for last spring break so that was really fun because you can just drive down and see all the cities and stuff yeah we went from danville to nashville to montgomery to to mobile mm -hmm. and then dolphin island alabama yeah it was awesome awesome all right, so um, I'm going to stop my screen share. This is the Danville mural um, that's painted downtown. So let me stop this. And um, yeah, so we threw a lot of information at you. Hopefully that was kind of what you were expecting, us talking a bit about, you know, the opportunities available to center students, faculty, and staff here in Central Kentucky in Danville. Um, I do want to make sure, we all want to, make, want, want to make sure that you have an opportunity to ask any questions, so you're welcome to put those in the chat or to unmute yourself. Um, the one thing, though, that I would say that encompasses all of the different slides and the different verbs and whatnot that we talked about is community. So anytime you talk to somebody within the center community, that's going to be one of the main words that they use. You know, the close-knit, tight-knit community, the family orientation that we have both within our center students, faculty, and staff, but also within the greater Danville community. We have a whole office dedicated to community engagement and making sure that um, we are engaged, we're, we're respectful and responsible citizens, and we're contributing to the areas in which we live. So huge parts of campus, um, but community kind of sums all of that up. But yeah, before we've got a, a few minutes left, do you all have any questions? If not, we can keep talking. We can do a little dance or something, um, anything along those lines. You guys mentioned a center term. Could you say a little bit more about that? What is it and how do students take advantage of it? So Lauren, do you wanna talk about center term? Sure, so center term is our January term. Um, it's basically just a fancy name for that. We use center in a lot of things on campus, but um, center term are the three weeks of January right after our winter break. Um, where our students only take one class for three weeks. And so it's a very creative time. Center term is not optional. I know at some schools it's optional to do the three week term. It's in January, everyone comes back or they have some kind of different opportunity that they're taking advantage of. Um, so typically everyone's here taking a unique course, maybe doing an internship, maybe studying abroad. It's very much an open time, um, but the classes are really unique. They're very quirky, usually kind of fun. I know as a student, I took um, haunted American history, history of food and the art of walking all while I was a student, um, which were super fun and unique. And it's just a nice time to focus on one course and everyone's kind of taking something different, but it is, um, all students are expected to do center term. Um, it's not like an extra cost or anything and um, the only extra cost would be for the study abroad trips but during our january term those center term trips really go all over the globe i know this year they were in um, finland thailand new zealand south africa they go to a ton of different places so um center term i was a student it was probably my favorite time of the year just because you get to like really focus on one class and you have some more time to hang out with your friends and um it was always just a really nice way to get back from to campus after our winter break so, JK and Mimi, I don't know if y'all have had some favorite center term classes or things that you've gotten to do. 
I've been all of my center time classes are my favorite. Honestly, my first year I took Russian history, which is kind of dense to like be talking about Russian history for three hours a day, but like for like the whole week. But it was it was kind of fun because our professor is like a already retired professor, but just coming to visit to teach just center term. But he was there when Soviet Union collapsed, so it was like a really like cool insight to like know about it. Um, and then that's my second center term. I took genocide class. So it was also another dance class to be talking about three hours a day. But all of them were very just like, because you're focusing on just one thing, you learned a lot and like you also remember a lot from that class and everything. And, and I also went to South Africa for center time. So it's also really other neat things. Center time is just a lot of fun because you have a lot, a lot more time and you're just hanging out with a lot of friends. And also classes are smaller, I think. Well, these are my classes are smaller. So that was a lot more fun. Yeah, I've definitely taken advantage of both of my center terms so far. So my first center term was an acting class with a professor named Patrick Kagan Moore, who is a king. I think he's awesome. Um, he kind of just told us like, hey, we're going to do a storytelling class where you guys kind of act out a story um, that's important to you. And I got the opportunity to tell the story of how um, my dad got to this country. And it was super meaningful to me. I'd never really spoke to, to my dad about it, got to learn a lot about myself and my, my my dad and his history and then got to perform it for for eight minutes in front of some people that have become really really close to me um after that my center term this year was actually an internship back home at my high school so i got to help out my um, college counselor at my high school and kind of work on college access stuff and and took advantage of, of my january term my sen my center term and and worked and and got credit for it uh, thanks to center and I was able to present what what I had done and the, the the work that I had done back home when I got back on campus. So um, definitely looking forward for for next year's center term, whatever it may be. But um, Mimi talks about some really really interesting classes that I'm like, wow, I wish I can take those classes. So mm. we'll see. Yeah, the general genocide class is really cool because you watch a lot of really good incredible movies too throughout the semester. So it's just uh, it's just such a wonderful class. Yeah. Very insightful. Also, I'll jump in too because I love center term. I got to escape the cold for three center terms. Um, nice. So my first year actually it was pretty interesting. Um, the oil spill had just happened, and uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. So I actually took a class called Actualizing the Big Spill, where I got to go down to Mobile, Alabama, Dauphin Island Sea Lab. That's actually run or was run by a center alum. And um, I studied the impact of the oil spill and whatnot with other classmates. And so that was as a first year I got to go down and that was pretty much the entire three weeks. Then I went to Ghana, um, one center term where I was studied education. I went to Merida, Mexico um, when my senior year and I'd already studied abroad in Merida, Mexico, but went back because I loved my host family and wanted to go spend time. But we studied film. And then there was a center term where I also observed um, a high school teacher, economics and Spanish teachers, just because that was, I, I was interested in education and, and that was an opportunity there, so. Awesome, thanks Emily for answering that. Hopefully that answered your question, um, but lots of cool opportunities. And I think on our website, there's a little bit about center term. You can look at the course listings and stuff, but there's always some fun different things going on. So I, I wanted to go to the one in New Zealand too, where they hike around all the volcanoes. That sounds super fun. I wish I had more time to do all the center turns. It's very true. Awesome. Any other questions before we Okay. Well, I know that we have somebody that just popped on and so they're welcome to hang around um, and we can kind of chat and go over the presentation and all that stuff. But everybody else, you all are welcome to reach out to any of us. Um, you can email in, any of us directly. It's our first name dot last name at center.edu or you can email just generally admission at center.edu. It's all over our website and whatnot. So, um, you know, we're happy to help support you in any way or answer any questions that you may have or that you didn't want to ask in a group setting. But we know that you all have got a lot of stuff going on. So thanks for spending about an hour with us. And if there's ever anything we can do, please don't hesitate to let us know. We're here for you and to help you through the college search process. Even if you're asking questions about other institutions or asking us, um, 
you know, to connect you with a faculty or staff member, that's what we're here to do. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. This is fun. Thank Thanks, JK and Mimi. Thank you. And then is it Gisela? If you want to hang on for just a second, we'll kind of give you a rundown and everything and um, 